Okay, so welcome everyone to the virtual open day for MA Conservation of Easel Paintings. My name's Claire Richardson and I'm head of the programme and I'm joined by my colleagues who I'll let uh, introduce themselves. Hi there, um, my name is Taka. Um, I'm the admissions officer for postgraduate applications. Um, I'm going to talk about admissions um, later, briefly. Um, so I see you later. My name is Catherine Duso. I'm a current third year in the uh, paintings conservation course. I'll be talking to you guys and taking some questions a bit later as well. Thanks, everyone. So I want to tell you a little bit about studying conservation at the Courtauld. Next year, the Courtauld celebrates 50 years of teaching the conservation of easel paintings, but our facilities are far from historic. Last year, the conservation department moved into our newly refurbished conservation center at Somerset House, where we have fantastic facilities, including our studios, conservation science labs, and technical imaging facilities. We are just next door to the Courtauld Gallery and we're close to the conservation studios of our colleagues in the gallery conservation department, as well as our curatorial colleagues. We try to work with the gallery and its collections as much as we can, and this gives a really important professional context to our teaching. I should say that Somerset House is just on the Strand in London, close to Trafalgar Square and Covent Garden, and the National Gallery is just a short walk down the road. So we've all got London's museums and galleries to offer us a rich cultural experience to anyone who studies here. But we also have another campus at Vernon Square. Vernon Square hosts our seminar rooms and lecture theatres, our libraries and student and academic services. It also has a garden for outdoor eating in the summer, as you can see here. There's a packed programme of activities organised at Vernon Square as part of the Courtauld's research culture. And there are always interesting lectures and activities going on that you can take part in to enrich your studying experience. I want to turn now to an overview of the course, highlighting its special elements. And then this will be followed by more details on how to apply and an opportunity for questions. So key elements of the course are learning, of course, about the theoretical aspects of conservation and the principles behind our conservation treatments. But what's really special about the course is that right from the beginning, you have the opportunity to apply theory in the real life situation of working on the conservation of paintings in the studio. Another of our real strengths is in the study of the history of artists, materials and techniques and the use of cutting edge technical methods to investigate paintings. Embedded within a world leading centre for the history of art, we work in partnership with our colleagues to set our work within the context of art historical scholarship. And this also leads us to our research. Our faculty is active in research in the conservation field, but we're also really proud of our students' research that is a key part of our course. Our students often publish their work or contribute to larger research projects in collaboration with other museums, institutions or conservation schools around the world. As I said, studio practice is at the heart of what we do. In the first year of the course, you can expect to spend 50% of your time in the studio, rising to 70% in the second year and something like 60% in the third year. The studio is your chance to put theoretical knowledge into practice and to hone your practical skills. You're supervised closely in the studio by experienced staff who can help answer your questions and guide your development. And by the final year, you'll feel confident to lead the treatment of your paintings. You also gain useful transferable skills, such as learning how to manage your time and juggle deadlines on practical projects. Studio work is a really important preparation for joining the conservation profession. We also encourage you to do your work experience during the summer vacation. By the time you graduate, you'll have a portfolio of treatments to show any potential employer. As I said, the Courtauld has a long track record of expertise in the history of materials and techniques and the technical study of paintings. And here you can see our professor, Viva Bernstock, with first year students looking at macro XRF study of a painting in our collection. This cutting edge techniques allows us to find out so much about how paintings are made completely non-invasively. And we're one of the few research centers in the UK with access to this equipment. 
We also have an archive built up over many years with a wealth of ancient pigments, documents on the history of conservation and materials and samples for study. So now a little more detail on each of the three years that you'll study for the MA at the Courtauld. We have two 12 week semesters each academic year and you'll be occupied full time with your studies throughout that time. In the first year, you spend 50% of your time in the studio and the remainder is taken up with lectures, seminars and independent study. The first strand of teaching involves the study of the history of materials and te techniques through lectures and a five week practical course in the replication of historic painting techniques. Hand in hand with these is a course introducing the technical study of paintings. And here you can see some examples. So this was having a go in the middle here at making an impressionistic sketch, um, painting in plein air outside. Um, that looks like the embankment, I would say. And then um, we've got copying closely from a painting in our collection. And you can see on the left hand side, studying a painting that's to be copied using the microscope. Oh, and alongside this, you can see some of the making of historic materials. So paint preparation, you can see um, making lake dye stuffs here and preparing verdigris from copper plate. So it's super exciting to have a chance to make these um, historic methods, historic materials following historic methods and really exploring what you can learn from archival recipes, for example. And students learn to undertake technical study themselves from the very first term and to interpret the images and the results that they produce. And throughout this, they learn about history, the materials and techniques and the history of the painting. And you can see here Aviva looking at a painting under the microscope. And we're always working really closely with the staff with students to kind of explore what we can see and what we can interpret for these kinds of technical studies. But by week seven of the first semester, students receive their first paintings to treat. So our current first years are just getting started now. And it's always a really exciting moment. Students are each allocated a painting to treat and work under close supervision, but with increasing independence as the three years progresses. The second year of the course is particularly focused on studio based learning with 70% of the time devoted to this. Students develop their conservation practice and decision making skills in the studios. At this point, they tend to embark upon some more challenging aspects of conservation. So repair, repairing splits in panel paintings. And that's what you can see with this kind of um, amazing setup on the left hand side, or perhaps um, addressing issues with canvas paintings such as tears or bulges in the canvas. And, that's what's going on in the bottom middle here. And then they gain experience of removing varnish and of course, retouching paintings, which is what you see on the top middle. Also in the second year, you receive extra specialist teaching on kind of more advanced conservation topics, including the conservation of modern and contemporary art, preventive conservation. We have extra workshops, visits to conservation studios and scientific um, labs and facilities. And just on the right hand side, you can see here students at a National Trust property um, looking at the roof as part of a preventive conservation visit, which is a really um, exciting uh, trip. In year two, the easel painting students also take part in the Painting Pairs programme. And this is a chance for the postgraduate students from History of Art and Curating to work collaboratively with one of our students to research a painting being treated in the department. We select paintings to give a range of objects and likely research questions. And they often have really, really exciting findings. And you can go and have a look at this one on our website. By the final year, as well as de demonstrating highly proficient skills in the studios, our third year students also undertake a research project and 10,000 word dissertation. And this is often led by students' interests and it's a chance for them to explore a subject they feel passionate about. 
and they have the opportunity to present this work at a student conference organised in collaboration with other conservation training programmes in the UK. In both the second year and the third year, the students travel to an international centre for conservation to get a more global perspective on their work. And these trips are always an amazing opportunity to see diverse approaches to conservation, as well as a chance for students to spend time together and have fun. And um, this image, in fact, you can see Kat right in the centre. This image is from our trip to Florence last year, which was really amazing. And this brings us to our community and social activities. There's lots going on as a postgraduate student at the Courtauld, but we also have our own departmental traditions, sometimes slightly eccentric departmental traditions. This includes regular fancy dress parties where we embrace a variety of art and conservation related themes. So now to turn to our entry requirements and a bit more detail of the application process. Usually students applying to our programme have an undergraduate degree in history of art, fine art or science, but we do consider other degrees. So don't be put off if you have a different degree. Normally you would have achieved a good 2-1 in your undergraduate degree. Um, and you can see here the equivalents for American degrees um, and overseas qualifications. We have some other requirements as well. We really hope that you have good hand skills. And if you're selected for interview, you'll be required to demonstrate your hand skills by a practical assignment and also the submission of a portfolio of artwork. It doesn't have to be just painting and drawing. We accept other kinds of artwork or even knitting projects, something that shows that you have um, good manual dexterity. We also um, have a slide test and tests of your colour vision. So we require um, you to have good colour vision. Um, we have tests for English language profic proficiency for those applying um, for, from overseas. And offer holders are also required to complete and pass a bespoke online pre-course science course. So I'm going to hand over now to Taka for other important information. Thank you. Thank you, Claire. Um, hi there, everybody. Um, hello again. Um, so I'm going to talk about a little bit more about admissions. Um, so our application portal, um, our application for um, this, this this academic year, is, um, hopefully we are going to open them um, this week. Um, we are currently finalising all the tests, um, so hopefully we can actually open applications this week. Um, you've got until um, 4th of January 2024 um, just, um, to submit your applications. Um, I'm going to talk about um, scholarships um, and funding opportunities. Um, our court order scholarships and um, applications open in late spring, so you don't have to actually do anything at this point or with your application. Um, all offer holders are eligible to apply and we will send a notification email when applications are open. Um, you receive the outcome before you have to make a decision by paying the deposit in May. Um, scholarships amounts do vary. Um, but last year it was average £7,000 towards tuition fees. Um, master's loan. Um, students on this programme are not eligible to apply for the master's loan from the UK government. And we've got another funding opportunity called Hardship Funds. Um, if you are eligible, you can apply for our Hardship Fund once your enrolment is complete. Um, awards up um, of up to £1,000 can be made from the hardship fund. Normally, financial, su financial support is in the £400 to £600 range. The um, hardship fund is limited. Um, so once all the funds have been allocated to students, the hardship fund will close for the academic year. Uh, this fund cannot be used for tuition fees payment, um, but can be used for living expenses 
or um, buying food or buying, uh, so paying for rent and stuff. Um, accommodations, um, um, accommodations um, applications will, will open in late spring. Um, we mainly have um, University of London um, intercollegiate halls for um, postgraduate students. Um, these accommodations are mainly for international students who have never studied in the UK previously. Um, but um, if you like to live it in the sort of student halls, um, even if you are British students or UK students, um, you are eligible to apply. Um, but we generally prioritise um, international students who never lived in this country before. Um, if you've got any questions, um, please email pgadmissions at courtauld.ac.uk. Um, and also, um, we have a Q&A function below. And after this slide, um, we're just going to open Q&A sessions with Claire. Um, so please um, type your questions um, in that um, Q&A sec um, section and then we can just answer your questions. Right, thank you. And back to Claire. Oh, I think Claire, you are mute. Sorry. Um, thank you very much, Taka. As Taka said, we're gonna open now to any questions. So if you have any burning questions that you'd like to ask, please um, type into the chat, into the Q&A, and, we'll, um, and we'll answer them. And both, um, and Kat's also here to give a student perspective, if you have any questions, particularly on what it's like um, studying and, and the student life. be shy I can't see any questions yet um so this is a really great question is it mandatory to have some chemistry or science background no it isn't mandatory that you have chemistry or science backgrounds and we have a prerequisite course that you can follow online um that really helps you to get that um, science background ready for when you start the course. What I would say is it does help if you are interested um, because you do have to put in a bit of time towards learning that aspect. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the next question is where do students tend to find work post degree? And um, I would say that we have graduates working in um, many different museums and galleries, but also in the private conservation sector in research, in academia. So there's lots and lots of different um, places that you can go to find work. We've got recent graduates who've taken internships um, in museums in, the, in America, in um, Europe. So really um, good options for employment post-degree. Oh, these are really good questions. Thank Absolutely. you. So um, do you have any guidance for the personal statement portion of the application? Is there anything in particular you look for from your applicants? Um, what I would say is that it's really important that you understand what conservation entails and that you've prepared a little bit um, for your application. Um, so, so having looked, um, having maybe had a chance to visit a conservation studio, try to look and see what things you can watch online. There's lots of brilliant videos now from conservation studios and museums around the world. So get a real sense of what the job involves, um, because it is um, a three year full time degree and it's it's a lot of work. So it's really important that you know uh, what conservation is, I think, before you apply. Kat, did you have any comments on that? I think um, for me, the most important thing was to express my personal enthusiasms. Um, we all connect to this field from various different ways and arrive at our destination applying to this course from different um, paths and just really expressing your personal journey towards conservation and um, what excites you about art. 
um, we all really love geeking out and talking about that. So you can't really go wrong with expressing yeah. your personal enthusiasm. Absolutely. Yeah, that's really, really important. Thank you. Um, so what are placements like for internships? Um, we we don't take any interns at the court old, but we um, usually send students to postgraduate paid internships. Um, so um, we have had students be successful in their applications for internships. I hope that answers that question. I'm not sure if it does. Is there a practice for the science test? Um, the science test, there are a series of quizzes as part of the prerequisite science course, and you can take them as many times as you like until you um, have achieved the pass mark so you can keep practicing. If you're not ready to apply now, is it more difficult to start the master's and career path later in life? I actually think it's quite an advantage to come um, having had some time out from studying. It's um, it's a good thing to have done other things first and come back really feeling um, strongly about applying for conservation. Um, so I think it's better to apply when you're ready, is what I would say. I'll just say that I um, actually came uh, to the Courtauld after about a 10 year break from academia. I graduated from my undergraduate, which was in biochemistry in 2013. Um, and since then I had been working mostly in food science. So um, your route can be very circuitous to get to here, but um, that enthusiasm that you bring and your confidence in um, wanting to be here specifically for this course and in conservation specifically is the thing that matters the most. Yeah. Um, okay, so there's some specific questions here about the application deadline um, and where to find all the forms to fill in. Tekka, do you want to answer that? Yes, um, applications are going to be um, open uh, sometime this week. Um, and then if you go to the course page, um, um, MA, is, uh, MA Conservation of Easel Paintings, there's a little button um, at the top of the page saying apply. If you click that page, um, button, um, that will actually take you to the application page. At the moment, um, there's no link um, to the application portals yet, um, but I'm probably updating that page sometime this week, and then you can actually find the application form there. Um, in terms of the portfolio of three to five pieces by May, um, that's, the, that's for the interview. Um, We've got the interviewed. Oh, sorry, um, I just thought it was nicer to be able to see you a bit bigger. I just saw, I just saw my face in love. <laughs> <laughs> um, so um, we've got the interview uh, in in February sometime. Um, and on the website on the application page, and um, there's a we've actually uh, specified the uh, I think a week and um, for the interview. Um, so you can have a look at that information. Um, you need a portfolio by um, your interview time, um, and it, uh, not May. Uh, May is the first of May, uh, sorry, it might actually be moved to 7th of May. That That is the deposit deadline. That's when you need to uh, make your decision. Yeah, we need to see your portfolio as part of the application process. So we usually ask for your portfolio or I think images of your portfolio. It doesn't have to be the physical works themselves in time for your interview. Um, can you get a scholarship for each year? Yes, you can. Um, if you've studied conservation previously and you want to put conservation treatments in your portfolio of things to show, that's completely appropriate. That would be fine. If you haven't and you want to show other kinds of things in your portfolio, that's also fine. What we ask are that you think about the kinds of skills that you'd like to show in terms of your manual practical abilities and include things in your portfolio that help us to see that you have those skills. In what years do you travel abroad um, for conservation trips? Usually in the second year and the third year. Obviously that's um, circumstances permitting. Can you defer your place on the course if you are accepted? Um, I believe this has happened, yes, in particular circumstances. Yeah, but um, generally speaking, we do not offer deferred places, um, but um, we assess um, your circumstances case by case. 
But generally speaking, we do not offer a deferred um, um, offers. Um, but in very extreme cases, um, we have done it in the past. But please do not think that is a sort of a normal thing to do. Yes, thank you, Takas. Thank you for clarifying. Yeah. Um, how many applications does the course generally receive per year? We receive lots of applications. It's very competitive. If you do not have undergraduate experience in art, history or art, is it harder to create a portfolio? Well, as I've said, we will accept your knitting projects. We will accept um, any kind of crafting, anything you think can show us that you have good hand skills. But it is really important for us to be able to make judgments about your hand skills. Are there any other questions? Is the interview in person or on Zoom? The interview is on Zoom. I'm just going to give a final few minutes just for any last questions that might occur to you. Um, because I haven't got any currently on my screen. Um, maybe just that I can ask you a question. Claire. <laughs> <That's> great. <laughs> um, yeah. I get um quite a lot of emails asking about um what sort of research they can do before the course starts, and and in terms of um just to write a sort of personal statement so on. Um, you know, you mentioned uh, just doing research on. Um, con painting conservation itself um, and then you mentioned sort of YouTube videos and stuff is there sort of books would you recommend or the, are there many books that you can just read in terms of sort of introduction sort of level yeah um, oh that's a really good tricky question <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> um, let me have a think um, I think some of the kind of books on conservation can be quite um, technical and, and quite hardcore actually to start with so I would say um, I think that lots of big museums have really great um, online videos from their conservation studios I know the National Gallery have content online um, we have some content online about our conservation research projects um, other major museums are putting more and more conservation content online so I would have a look at some of those videos to start with there are books you can read um, there are books about paint technology, um, books about historic materials and techniques. These are all um, really nice. The National Gallery has technical bulletins and they're all available online. Um, so those are some of my recommendations. Kat, can you think of any good recommendations? I would say with the, um, you know, the advent of social media being part of our landscape now, almost every museum has a specific Instagram for their conservation department and lots of regional labs and even private labs will have Instagrams and Facebook pages where they'll be sharing projects or links to their personal blogs will there be sharing personal projects. And that's a great place to start and also just start to get in the loop of um, how we all communicate with one another. And social media is a big part of that now. Yeah, I think that's a great point. Thanks, Kat. Um, oh, OK, so we've got some more questions now. Um, there's one there about the fees. Taka, can you answer that one? Um, yes, uh, the, the second one, the uh, second one and maybe the third one. <laughs> uh, sorry, I wasn't like, uh, the fees published in the website. Yeah, sorry. Um, so the are uh, the fees published in the website and the ones for the old three years? Or oh, thank you. Um, no, it's a uh, it's per um, uh, per year, so per annual um, fees. So, um, that you need. Ah, oh, I've lost Tucker for a minute. Me too. Ah, oh, I'm sure he'll be back. Let's see if there's any other comments. I'm going to just quickly come to the question about the cost of living in London and do students work during the course? Um, so what I would say is um, the cost of living in London, you know, it can be an expensive city to live in. Um, and some students do take work during the course. What I would say is that it is a full time course and it is um, there is teaching um, pretty much 
five days a week. We can't always guarantee that you'll have time available during the course to do um, working. So sometimes that means weekend working or evenings, and that's quite difficult. But what I would say is that, of course, the course is delivered over two 12-week semesters, and that does leave long vacation periods in which it's possible to work and save up money um, for uh, to help you with your sort of cost of living. Sorry, Taka, we lost you halfway. No, through. sorry. It's Talking mine. about no, the fine. fees. <laughs> yes. Um, so um, the question is, is the fee for all three years? And you were saying it's not for all three years inclusive. It's yeah. per year. Per year. That's, I that, suppose that's the question is, taken. are the fees, do the fees... Um, do we know would you know what the fees are going to be for your second and third year or are they um, so we, we've got a cap um so it, once you actually pay that 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 particular fee is going to apply for all three years um so we're not going to increase um your fees um but when you apply um the following uh, for, when you apply next year fee might be increased um but once you start paying um that's actually capped uh, for three years um, so I think that so we you'll are... be able to budget for yeah work. yeah. Um, so I'm just going to ask another question. Uh, can you talk a little bit more about the funding? I just wanted some clarification about the government funding point. Does it all have to be self-funded, scholarships funded in terms of SFE? Um, so the master's loan. Um, so th this three years program is actually far too. Um, it's it's too long to be eligible. Um, for master's long, um, master's long, um, because uh, the master's course that needs to be maximum two years, um, to be eligible for the um funding. So unfortunately, um, the options are self funding or scholarships. Um, we do have um good scholarships, and then we try to fund um students throughout um three years um, of the of the program if we can. Um, but sometimes it's not possible um, as funding all scholarships we have are donations. Um, but we would like to try as many students as possible financially. Um, but the um, scholarships um, applications are quite competitive because um, just um, almost everybody um, would actually apply for the scholarships and then we cannot um, support everybody on the course, unfortunately. Um, OK, so. So I think just the next question is the contact hours. Um, would you like to answer that, Claire? Yes. Um, so the contact hours per week are, it's, I think usually you have um, between four and a half days or four days um, taught or supervised in the studio. So the contact hours are four and a half days in the first year, I think. And by the second year, it's four days and third year, it's four days. And then you have that other time in the week is for self-guided study. Um, Taka, there's a question here about the alumni discount. Sorry, I, I don't think I'm actually seeing that. Oh, yes. Uh, no, again. Oh, yeah, sorry. And uh, does that mean kind of apply if, if you take time out of your studies? Um, yes. Um, if you studied... Um, so I assume this student and um, this um, particular person has studied with us before. Um, and then you've got a sort of gap in between in terms of education. Um, but um, yes, that that's absolutely fine. Once you have studied and completed your studies, um, if you apply for a new course, um, um, the uh, um, discount would apply to your tuition fees. OK, there's a question here asking, although the course is clearly about conservation of art, there is presumably a large element which is about analysis of art from a forensic perspective. Would you be able to say how much of the course is on analytical techniques and how much is about conservation and restoration of artwork? Um, I would say that studying analytical techniques is a is a proportion of the course, but it's um, just it's one module in the first year and then it forms a part of the studio modules in the second and third year. Mm -hmm. So um, the majority of the course is about the conservation and restoration of artwork. Um, I would say I'm trying to think of a percentage. Um, it's one module, so it's probably maybe half a day through the first year is devoted to this particular topic. 
And then how many people are typically accepted for the MA course? We accept six students a year onto the course and we have a short waiting list as well. There's a little bit of a pause in questions. Have you all asked all the questions you would like to ask? I think if there are no more questions, we might bring this to a close. Um, obviously, if you have one last burning question, you should ask it. But otherwise, I think we'll bring this to a close in the next few minutes. Maybe we'll get you to give an update from your side, like a student perspective, perhaps just a couple of minutes. Sure. Um, so my name again is Kat, and I am a current third year in the course. At the moment, we are in the midst of our nine-week personal research project in the third year, which is why I am working from home and not our beautiful studios today. We're in the writing portion of the nine weeks. Um, it's been an absolutely incredible experience so far. Um, the practical elements of the course have been immensely educational and also so rewarding just in terms of for me, kind of justifying the choice to take on this course and to take this path, um, getting to treat paintings on a daily basis in the studio is just an incredible opportunity and really reminds you, you know, why you chose this path and why you like to be there. Um, getting to be hands on with the art in an environment where you're collaborating with your peers and getting to use the analytical techniques that you've been taught to direct your practice um, and really inform your practice is an amazing opportunity as well. Um, in the past few years, I've done some really amazing things extracurricularly as well because of my involvement with the Courtauld, um, all of the amazing lectures that take place at the Courtauld that is outside of our course, but still available to us as students. Um, the small internships and study opportunities, the in-situ projects I've been able to be involved with. Um, this past summer, I was able to do four months internship at a nonprofit regional center in the US uh, in a paintings conservation department. And through that, I was able to participate in the treatment of 18 paintings over the course of the four months. So really just jumping right into practical treatment based on the experience I've gotten from this course alone, even while I'm still a student. Um, so. Um, it's just been an incredible experience and the tutors are all fantastic. Um, Claire is my personal tutor, so I'm a little biased, but. <laughs> um, giving away. Yeah, I'm, I'm not, I didn't call <laughs> to say these things. It's been wonderful. Um, and yeah, if you guys have any questions about student life, please let me know. I'm also happy to be contacted outside of um, this Q&A as well, if anyone has any personal questions. Oh, Kat, you've got a question about your your project and what's it on. The question is, is the nine weeks research based on an art piece you're supposed to work with? Um, so we all get to kind of pick our topic for this. So that's something that we all did in second year was that we took the time individually to come up with a project proposal, a project tutor to work with specifically, and then kind of um, cater um, an abstract to what we'd like to do in this research. And then started this year, just jumping straight into the research element. And it's kind of amazing the varied topics that we're doing in each cohort and also through the history of doing these third year projects over um, the last however many years of the course. Um, my personal project is mostly an archival research based. It's um, based on a series of portraits, um, one of which I was actually able to treat in my first year and second year as a student and that have been treated as a series 
at the Core Child since 2006. So almost 20 years of treatment of this really extensive series. And I'm taking a look at previous Core Child students' reports um, that they've compiled on each of those paintings, um, which at this point is about 77 of the full series have been treated here at the Courtauld. So I'm taking a look at the conservation documentation um, of those pieces to compile a materials and te technique survey of this particular artist, as well as taking a look at what conservation documentation specifically can do and the kinds of questions that it can answer. So that's just one project, that's my own. Um, and then we have students this year that are taking a look at um, testing of sensitivities in modern uh, materials, a um, couple people taking a look at how we can use specialized microscope equipment to investigate paint surfaces. So it's really varied the kind of research that you can do. Um, we have another student that's doing like a deep dive into the materials and techniques of a specific artist by looking at three of their paintings. Um, so the research project is really, you know, the world's your oyster. And um, you can really pursue your interests individually, which you have also developed over the course of the past two years um, through your practical experience and your academic experience.